Question 7. A cart of mass, M, is pulled along a level dynamics track as shown. A force sensor is attached to the cart with a string and used to measure the horizontal force exerted on the cart to the right. A motion sensor is used to measure the acceleration of the cart with the positive direction toward the right. Friction is not negligible. So that means that you have friction. So the velocity is going in that direction. So let's draw our free body diagram. We know that it's on the ground, so we're going to have a normal force. We know that it's on Earth, so it's going to have a gravity. You can call this tension for the string or force applied. I'm just going to call it force applied because that's what they call it in the problem. And then friction is not negligible, so we're going to have friction. Now the student pulls the force sensor with a constant force and the accelerate and the cart accelerates. And here is what they get for their data table. So now what you have to do is plot the data for the acceleration of the cart as a function of the force reading on the sensor. Make sure to scale all axes. So you want to think about what your scale is going to be. Um, this isn't the easiest scale. I did mine by 0.2 for acceleration. And um, then I did my, and luckily they've already put your units and everything here, so you just have to scale it. And for my force, I did it by 0.1. You want to give it a scale that's going to give you the best reading, make it easier to read in case you have to interpret your data or, or interpolate your data. So now you're just going to plot the data. Now once you've plotted your points, and I didn't make you sit through me doing that, you're going to do your line of best fit. So I'm going to use my little tool here because I don't want to have to worry about getting out of ruler. Obviously this does not go through zero, so I'm not going to make it go through zero. I'm going to draw my line of best fit where it is, and your line of best fit might be slightly different than my line of best fit, but what you should see is that it does go through maybe some of your points, but it should be an average above and below your line. So I'm going to do mine somewhere around this. Again, yours may not be exactly what mine is. Also, what you can do is you can do a linear regression on your calculator and see what it looks like, and that kind of helps you draw your line of best fit. <clears throat> That's allowed, um, just as long as you show how you've plotted it. All right, so now using the straight line from the graph, calculate the mass of the cart. Whenever they give you a graph, they want you to relate it to an equation that you are working with in this problem. So we have to think about Newton's second law. We know that Newton's second law says force is equal to mass times acceleration, technically net force. And <clears throat> we can see that since we are looking for our mass, well, they plotted acceleration here. So we're going to say rise over run, acceleration divided by force. But if we do that, that doesn't give us mass. It gives us one over mass. And that's fine. We're just going to find our slope. Now, when you do this, remember, you're going to find two points on your line. Do not use points from the table unless they specifically are on your line. I grabbed this point right here, which I had <clears throat> as 0.6 and at 0.56 seconds. And my line here might not be perfect with my numbers because um, I did this earlier. And um, the second one that I picked was 0.12 and 0.34. So again, oops, I had somewhere around here. When I get this, I'm going to get 2.18. But remember, that's 1 over m. So I have to say 1 divided by 2 point. So mass is equal to 1 divided by 2.18. And that's going to give me 0.46 kilograms. 
using the straight line from the graph to determine the magnitude of the force of friction. So here you have to think about what's going on with this. Where could I get the force of friction from? Well, in this case, it's going to be our x inner slope right here. So the friction is just going to be straight right off the graph, and I got that as 0.28 newtons. Again, yours might be slightly different, but it should be close to that. So it's just simply reading the x-intercept of your graph. So the next question asks, um, if it's repeated with a constant force sensor reading of 0.45 newtons, the car starts from rest at time equals zero and is pulled for a time of two seconds along the dynamics track. Determine the acceleration of the cart. So we need to figure out our acceleration and acceleration is going to be equal to our net force over our mass. And well, it says it has a constant force on the force reader. That's going to be 0.45 newtons. We're going to subtract our friction from that, 0.28 newtons. And we're going to use the mass that we got in the problem up above, which is 0.46 kilograms. And now when you're doing this, um, use what you get in the equation above. So um, as long as you use what you got up above, even if it's not correct, you should still get full credit for it. This is going to give me 0.37 meters per second squared. Now the string breaks at time t equals 2 seconds. Calculate the time it takes for the cart to stop after the string breaks. So what does this mean? The string breaks. That means there's no more applied force. So applied force is now equal to zero. So that means my net force is just equal to friction. So I like to think of it with the same equation and say acceleration is equal to net force over mass. And we're going to say zero minus our friction, which is 0.28 divided by our mass, which is 0.46. And that's going to give me an acceleration of negative 0.61 meters per second squared. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can just say friction divided by mass, but then you have to remember to bring that negative in because since we're going to use our kinematics, we need to make sure that we are consistent with our direction and our acceleration. So I'm trying to find the time it takes to stop. So I'm going to use my kinematic velocity final. Sorry. Minus velocity initial. All over acceleration equals time. This is just the first kinematic rearranged, but you've used it enough. You should be able to see it. All right. So that sounds great, except for let me replace some things. And then my velocity final is zero. And I know my acceleration is 0.61. So let's put that in here. And I know it's negative 0.61. And that's why I did the negative to make sure that cancels. But I don't know what my velocity initial is. Well, my velocity initial is going to be the velocity final of that two seconds. So I have to go back up to the problem above and find that velocity. So I can say that it starts from rest and I can, sorry, my, sorry, my pen is messing up here. So I can start from rest, so I can get rid of my velocity initial times acceleration times time. I'm going to use my acceleration of 0.37 times time, which is 2. That's going to give me a velocity initial of 0.74 meters per second. And that's what I'm going to use in my velocity initial down here. So I'm going to replace that and say 0.74. And then that's going to give me a time of 1.21 seconds. And I'm sorry I didn't give you all much room for this, but 
So there's my time. So you have to think about acceleration and then velocity and then acceleration and then time. And you have to think about the two different parts of the problem. All right, the last part, the experiment and analysis in parts A and B are repeated with a cart that has the same mass, but a greater force of friction. Will the slope of our new line be greater than, less than, or equal to the slope of your line in part B? So it has the same mass, which means since mass was our slope or whatever mass was our slope technically, but still the same, it's going to be equal to, so it's same mass, which means it's the same slope. So it has a greater force of friction. What does that mean? And well, before we get to that, what else would change if I were looking at this? Well, we know that I would have different points for my force and my acceleration, but they would still have the same slope. The last question says, will the horizontal intercept of your new line be greater than, less than, or equal to the horizontal intercept of the line in part B? Oops, I'm trying to make this all fit. Well, our force of friction was our intercept so if it says it has a greater friction, sorry, up here, that means I'm going to have a greater number for, or a larger number for my horizontal intercept. So it's just reading the graph and knowing how to interpret it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to move on to question number eight.